Hello dear students, welcome to Karna Maths Academy. Today in this video we are going to discuss solved examples of scalar product of vectors. Question number one, if vector, if the magnitude of vector a plus b is equal to the magnitude of vector a minus b, then prove that vector a is perpendicular to vector b. If modulus of vector a plus vector b is equal to modulus of vector a minus vector b then prove that vector a is perpendicular to vector b solution given magnitude of vector a plus b is equal to magnitude of vector a minus vector b we have to show that vector a and vector b are perpendicular to each other so let's solve it by squaring on both sides so squaring on both sides, SBS, taking a square of the vector of LHS and taking the square of the vector of RHS. Now we know that the square of the magnitude of any vector is equal to the square of the given vector. The square of the magnitude of any vector is equal to the square of the given vector and vice versa. That means the square of any vector is equal to the square of its magnitude. So when we square the magnitude of the given vectors, then it will be equal to the square of the given vectors. So magnitude of a plus b whole square, we can write vector a plus b whole square equals to the magnitude of vector a minus vector b whole square, we can write square of vector a minus vector b. Now expanding by using the formula of a plus b whole square and a minus b whole square a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square a minus b whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square we know that the square of any vector is equal to a square of its magnitude so we can write a square of vector a we can write it as a square of the magnitude of vector a that means we can write it equal to a square a square of the magnitude of vector a plus 2 vector a dot vector b as it is plus a square of any vector is equal to a square of its magnitude. So we can write a square of vector b is equal to b square, which is the magnitude of the square of vector b. A square of any vector is equal to a square of its magnitude. So we can write a square of vector a is equal to a square of the magnitude of vector a, which is a square minus 2a dot vector b, we can write as it is, plus a square of vector b is equal to a square of the magnitude of vector b. That means b square now a square a square both are same so we can cancel b square and b square both are same in lhs and rhs so we can cancel them then plus 2 a dot vector b dot shifting minus 2 a dot vector b dot to the left hand side then we get 2 a vector dot b vector minus 2 a vector dot b vector shifting to the left side then minus will become plus equals to 0 2 plus 2 4 2 plus 2 4 4 vector a dot vector b is equal to 0 or a dot b vector is equal to 0 by 4 that means equal to 0 so when the scalar product of any two vectors is equal to 0 then the vectors are perpendicular so we can say vector a is perpendicular to vector b Therefore, vector A is perpendicular to vector B. That means the two vectors A and B are perpendicular to each other. Hence, it is proved. So, if the magnitude of vector A plus vector B is equal to the magnitude of vector A minus vector B, that means the sum of the magnitude of two vectors is equal to the magnitude of the difference of two vectors, then the vector A is perpendicular to B or we can say vector B is perpendicular to vector A. Dear students, in this video we are going to discuss seven different types of most probable important questions. Please do not skip the video and watch till the end of this video. And if you have not subscribed our YouTube channel called Mass Academy, please subscribe it so that you will get daily new updates. Let's go to question number two. Question number two, find the angle between two diagonals of a cube. Find the angle between two diagonals of a cube solution according to the question we have to find the angle between the two diagonals of a cube 
let theta be the let theta be the angle between the two diagonals of a cube op and bm op and bm we take as any two diagonals any two diagonals of a cube and we suppose the angle between two diagonals that means angle between the diagonal op and diagonal bm of a cube as theta and we have to find the according to the question we have to find the angle between the two diagonals of cube let theta be the angle between two diagonals of two diagonals op and op and bm of a cube respectively we know that all the sides of a cube are equal so we suppose that the edge of the cube equals to a we suppose that the edge of the given cube equals to a so that we can find the coordinates of all the vertices of a cube we have to find the angle between the two diagonals op and bm we have to find theta the angle between two diagonals of a cube let vector op is equal to let vector op is equal to a comma a comma a the three edges we know that a cube is a three dimensional solid object it has three dimensions length breadth and height length breadth and height are taken along x axis y axis and z axis respectively the coordinates of a if we suppose the length of the edges of a cube as a then the coordinates of a will be a comma zero comma zero because we are suppose the length of cube as a so length of a will be a x coordinate will be a and y coordinates and z coordinates will be zero because the vertex a lies in the x-axis similarly the coordinates of b we can take as zero comma a comma zero because b lies in the y-axis so x coordinate will be zero y coordinate will be equal to the height of cube which is equal to a and z coordinate will be equals to zero similarly one of the corner of cube we have taken at the origin coordinates of origin that means o will be equal to 0 comma 0 comma 0 and the coordinates of the point p we can take as a comma a comma a because p lies in the space so it is at a distance of a unit from x axis a unit from y axis and a unit from z axis that means we can take the coordinates of the point p which is in the space as a comma a comma a now let so we can write vector op is equal to vector op is equal to a comma a comma a op is the position vector of the point p if the coordinates of the point p is a comma a comma a then vector op we can take as a comma a comma a and vector bm the coordinates of the point m the point m or we can say vertex m of the given cube lies in the x z plane so we can take x coordinate a z coordinate a and y coordinate we can take zero therefore the coordinates of the point m is a comma zero comma a therefore vector bm to find the angle between op and bm now vector bm is equal to x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1 comma z2 minus z1 therefore a comma a minus zero is equal to a zero minus a is equal to minus a and a minus zero is equal to a vector bm is equal to a comma minus a comma a now by using the formula of angle between two vectors we know vector op is a comma a comma a and vector bm bm is a comma minus a comma a now by using the formula of angle between two vectors we can easily find the angle between the two diagonals of a cube we know angle between any two vectors is given by the formula of cos theta we have two vectors op and bm and we have to find the angle between the two vectors op and bm so we can add cos theta is called op dot vector op dot vector bm divided by magnitude of vector op into magnitude of vector bm so let's find out the magnitude of vector op and bm the magnitude of vector op we know if x y and z component if we know the x y and z components of vector then we can find the magnitude by using the formula of magnitude of vector the formula of magnitude of vector is root x square plus y square plus z square x square means a square y square means a square z square means a square a square plus a square plus a square is equal to 3a square the square root of 3 is root 3 and a square root is a therefore the magnitude of vector op which is denoted by op is equal to root 3 similarly we can find the magnitude of vector bm that means the length of bm 
length of vector Bm. Bm is equal to, we know vector Bm is a comma minus a comma a, x, y, and z components. Therefore, the magnitude of vector Bm is root x square plus y square plus z square. x square means a square plus y square means minus a square plus z square means a square. Now, a square plus a square plus a square, which is also equal to 3a square. The square root of 3 is root 3, and the square root of a square is a. That means the magnitude of Bm is also equal to root 3. Now, to find the angle between two vectors, after finding the magnitude, we have to find the scalar product, or we can say dot product of two vectors. Let's find the dot product of two vectors, vector op dot vector bm. We know if the first vector is a1, a2, a3, and the second vector is b1, b2, b3, then the scalar product of two vectors is given by the formula a1 into a2 plus a1 into b1 plus a2 into b2 plus a3 into b3. By using the formula of the scalar product of two vectors, op vector op dot vector bm is a into a, which is a square plus a into minus a, which is minus a square plus a into a, which is a square, plus a square and minus a square we can cancel, then we get a square. Therefore, vector op dot vector bm, the scalar product of two vectors is equal to a square. Now, by using the formula of angle between two vectors, we can find the angle between the two diagonals of q. Cos theta is called op dot o bm divided by magnitude of op into magnitude of bm. Now, substituting the value of op dot bm, which is a square, and the magnitude of op and bm, each is equal to root 3a into root 3. a square, as it is, root 3 into root 3, we can write 3, and a into a, a square. a square, a square cancel, we get the value of cos theta, we get 1 by 3. Therefore, theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by 3. Therefore, the value of theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by 3, which is the required angle between two diagonals of cube. Therefore, the angle between the two diagonals of cube, that means angle between OP and the diagonal BM, angle between the diagonal OP and the diagonal BM, we have got equal to, we have got angle between two diagonals of cube, theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by 3. Let's go to question number 3. Question number three, if vector A and vector B are two vectors of unit length and theta is the angle between them so that one by two magnitude of vector A minus B is equal to sine theta by two. If vector A and vector B are two vectors of unit length and theta is the angle between them so that one by two magnitude of vector A minus B is equal to sine theta by two. Let's go to the solution. Solution, we are given that vector A and vector B, vector A and vector B are two vectors of unit length. That means the vector A and vector B are unit vectors. So we can write magnitude of vector A is equal to 1 and magnitude of vector B is equal to 1 because unit vector has length equal to 1 unit. We know that cos theta is equal to, that means angle between any two vectors, cos theta is equal to vector a dot vector b divided by magnitude of vector a into magnitude of vector b or cos theta is equal to vector a dot vector b the magnitude of vector a is 1 so we can put the value of magnitude of vector a equals to 1 the magnitude of vector b is equal to 1 so we can replace magnitude of vector b by 1 1 into 1 is equal to 1 therefore a dot b therefore the value of vector a dot vector b is equal to cos theta we have to show that 1 by 2 magnitude of vector a minus b is equal to sin theta by 2. So let's take the square of the magnitude of vector a minus b and let's solve it. Taking the square of the magnitude of vector a minus vector b, we know that square of the magnitude of any vector is equal to square of the given vector. Or we can say square of any vector is equal to square of its magnitude. So we can write square of vector a minus b equals to square of the vector a minus vector b. Now expanding by using the formula of a minus b whole square. a minus b whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square. The square of vector is equal to square of its magnitude. So vector a square we can replace by the magnitude of vector a which is equal to a square minus 2ab as it is plus b square. The square of vector b we can write as the square of magnitude of vector b which is equal to b square. The value of a square and b square already we have found equals to 1 because a and b are unit vectors. So the length of the unit vector is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 minus the value of a dot b. 
the value of a dot b already we have found the value of a dot b vector a dot vector b is equal to cos theta replacing the value of vector a dot vector b by cos theta so we get 2 cos theta now 1 plus 1 2 minus 2 cos theta as it is taking 2 common then 2 1 2 1 is left minus cos theta 2 as it is 1 minus cos a from the formula of trigonometry of sub multiple angles 1 minus cos a is equal to sin square a a by 2 so by using the formula of trigonometry of sub multiple angles 1 minus cos theta we can write equal to 2 sin square theta by 2 now 2 2 is 4 4 sin square theta by 2 therefore square of the magnitude of vector a minus vector b is equal to 4 sin square theta by 2 now if we take if we take the square root of 4 sin square theta by 2 then we get 2 sin theta by 2 so square square cancel then we get the magnitude of vector a minus b equals to 2 sin theta by 2 therefore shifting to on the left hand side we get 1 by 2 magnitude of vector a minus vector b is equal to sin theta by 2 hence it is proved if vector a and vector b are two vectors of unit length and theta is the angle between them then 1 by 2 magnitude of vector a minus b is equal to sin theta by 2 the magnitude of 1 by 2 vector a minus b is equal to sin theta by 2 let's go to question number 4 Question number four, prove vectorically that, question number four, prove vectorically that cos A plus B is equal to cos A into cos B minus sin A into sin B. And this is one of the most probable questions for exam. And this question is mainly asked in long questions. Let's go to the solution. We have to prove vectorically, that means by the vector method, we have to prove that cos A plus B is equal to cos A into cos B minus sin A into sin B. So we have to find the value of cos A plus B. So let vector OP and vector OQ be any two vectors. Let's suppose angle made by vector OP equals to A and the angle made by the vector OQ equals to B with the x-axis. Then the angle between two vectors will be equal to A plus B. The angle between two vectors will be equal to A plus B. And then we can easily find the angle between the two vectors by using the formula and we'll get the value of cos a plus b equals to cos a into cos b minus sin a into sin b. Let angle POX, let angle POX is equal to a and angle AOX and angle QOX is equal to b be the angle made by the vector OP and vector OQ respectively with x-axis. Then angle POQ that means the angle between two vectors OP and OQ will be equals to a plus b angle p o q which is the angle between two vectors o p and o q and it is equal to a plus b let's suppose the magnitude of vector o p let's suppose the magnitude of vector o p is equal to r1 and the magnitude of o q is equal to r2 if we draw p m perpendicular to x axis and Qn perpendicular to x-axis, then x component of vector OP is OM and y component is PM. Similarly, the x component of vector OQ is ON and the y component of vector OQ is QN. Now changing the coordinates of the vector P in the polar form, that means the x component and y component of vector OP and vector OQ we can write in terms of angle and their magnitude. We know that angle made by the first vector OP is angle A. So we can write X component OM, X component of vector OP that means OM we can write as R1 cos A because cos A means B by H the value of B will be R1 cos A. Therefore, x component of vector OP is equal to R1 cos A. Similarly, y component. y component is PM. We know sin A is equal to P by H. Then we get value of PM is equal to R1 sin A. The x component of vector OP is R1 cos A. And the y component is R1 sin A. Similarly, the x and y components of vector OQ in terms of angle B and the magnitude of vector, which is also known as polar form. The x and y component of vector OQ we can take as R2 cos B comma minus R2 sin B. The y component 
lies below x axis so y component will be negative the x component is r2 cos b and the y component is equal to minus r2 sin b so vector op and vector oq taking their x and y components in the polar form now we know the magnitude of vector op magnitude of vector oq and we know x and y components so by using the formula of angle between two vectors now we can easily find the value of cos a plus b that means angle between the vectors op and oq so let's find out the angle between op and oq cos a plus b a plus b is the angle between two vectors cos a plus b is equal to op dot oq divided by magnitude of op into magnitude of oq cos a plus b is equal to op vector dot vector oq divided by magnitude of vector op into magnitude of vector oq now let's put the value of vector op vector op is r1 cos a into comma r1 sin a and vector oq is r2 cos b comma minus r2 sin b magnitude of op we have supposed r1 and magnitude of oq we have supposed r2 now let's take the dot product the dot product of any two plane vectors is a1 into a2 plus b1 into a1 into b1 plus a2 into b2 that means we have to take the sum of the product of x components and y components r1 into r2 cos a into cos b cos a cos b then plus minus minus r1 r2 sin a sin b so taking the dot product products of two vectors op and oq r1 r2 r1 r2 we can take common then we have cos a cos b minus sin a into sin b r1 r2 keeping as it is now r1 r2 r1 r1 r2 they are same so we can cancel then cos a cos b minus sin a sin b we we got cos a plus b equal to cos a cos b minus sin a sin b therefore cos a plus b is equal to cos a into cos b minus sin a sin b hence it is proved therefore by using the formula of angle between two vectors we have got cos a plus b equals to cos a into cos b minus sin a sin b by using the vector method let's go to question number five question number five solve examples of scalar product of two vectors question number five question number five is same as question number four prove vectorically, vectorically that cos a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sin a into sin b prove vectorically that cos a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sin a into sin b let's go to the solution by applying vector method we have to prove the formula of trigonometry cos a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sin a into sin b so this is the formula of compound angles of trigonometry the application of scalar product of vectors are in different fields and by using the formula of scalar product of vectors we can derive different formula of plane trigonometry so let's go to the solution solution of question of five we have to find cos a minus b so let's suppose angle made by the first vector op is a and the angle made by the second vector oq is b then a minus b will be the angle between the two vectors op and oq that means if we suppose angle made by the first vector op with the x axis equals to a and the angle made by the second vector oq with x axis equals to b then angle poq the angle between two vectors op and oq will be equal to will be equal to a minus b and we have to find cos a minus b we have to find cos a minus b equals to cos a cos b plus sin a sin b so by using the formula of angle between two vectors we can easily find cos a minus b equals to cos a cos b plus sin a sin b let angle p o x let angle p o x is equal to angle a and angle q o x q o x is equal to angle b and be the angle made by two vectors o p and o q with x axis respectively therefore angle p o q is equal to angle a minus b therefore angle p o q is equal to a minus b let's suppose the magnitude of first vector o p is equal to r1 and the magnitude of the second vector oq is equal to r2 magnitude of vector op is equal r1 and magnitude of vector oq is equal r2 then vector op and oq now we can write the x and y component of vector op and oq in terms of magnitude in terms of r1 and r2 and the angles a and b 
which is also known as polar form. So let's express vector OP and OQ in the polar form. If we draw PM and QN perpendicular to X axis and Y axis, if we draw PM and QN perpendicular to X axis, then OM, then the X component of vector OP is OM and the Y component of vector OP is PM. Similarly, the X component of vector OQ, that means second vector, the X component of vector OQ is ON and Y component is QN. Now let's change the X component and Y component of the two vectors in the polar form. That means in terms of the magnitude R1, R2 and the angles A and B. The X component of first vector OP, the X component is OM. We know cos A is equal to B by H. So by using the formula of cos A, B by H, we can find the length of base. So OM will be equal to R1 cos A. Similarly, Y component, we know sine theta, or we can say we know sine is equal to P by H. That means we can find the Y component. The X component of vector OP is R1 cos A. Similarly, the Y component, sine A is equal to sine A is equal to P by H. That means we can find the value of perpendicular, which is the Y component. The Y component will be equal to R1 sine A. So R1 cos A and R1 sin A are X components and Y components of the vector OP. The X component of vector OP is R1 cos A and the Y component of vector OP is R1 sin A, which is known as the polar form. The X component and Y component expressing in the polar form. Now vector OQ, the X component of vector OQ is ON and Y component is Q, N. Angle made by vector OQ is B, cos B, cos B is equal to B by H. So by using the formula of cos, cos B is equal to B by H, we can find the length of ON, which is the X component of vector OQ. Cos B is equal to B by H, so ON, that means base will be equal to R2, which is the magnitude of vector OQ. R2 cos B is the X component, Similarly, sin B is equal to P by H. QN is the Y component. So, sin B is equal to P by H. So, Y component we can get by using the formula sin B is equal to P by H. We get the value of QN. That means Y component we get R2, which is the length of vector OQ, R2 sin B. R2 sin B is the Y component of vector OQ. So, changing X and Y components of vector OP and OQ in the polar form. That means in terms of their magnitude and the angle made by the vector with X axis. So we have to know that vector OP is R1 cos A comma R1 sin A and vector OQ is R2 cos B comma R2 sin B. In the polar form, vector OP and OQ are, are equal to R1 cos A R1 sin A and R2 cos B R2 sin B. We know the magnitude of two vectors OP and OQ which are R1 and R2 and we know X and Y components of the two vectors. Now by using the formula of angle between two vectors, we can easily find, we can find the angle between two vectors OP and OQ which is A minus B. Angle A minus angle B. The angle between two vectors OP and OQ is A minus B. So let's use the formula of angle between two vectors to find the value of cos A minus B. We know cos A minus B that means angle between two vectors is equal to angle between two vectors OP and OQ is OP dot OQ divided by magnitude of OP into magnitude of OQ. Let's substitute the value of OP vector and OQ vector. OP vector is R1 cos A, R1 sin A dot OQ vector is R2 cos B, R2 sin B. Taking the dot product of two vectors, we know that the dot product of two vectors is A1 into B1 plus A2 into B2. That means we have to take the sum of the product of X components and Y components. So let's take the dot product. R1 cos A into R2 cos B plus R1 sin A into R2 sin B is the dot product of the two vectors OP and OQ. R1, R2, R1, R2 we can take common. Then after taking R1, R2 common, we have cos A cos B plus sin A sin B. R1, R2 and R1, R2 both are same, so we can cancel. Then we get cos A cos B plus sin A sin B. Therefore, cos A minus B, we have got the angle between two vectors. The value of cos A minus B is equal to cos A cos B plus sin A sin B. Hence, it is proved. We have proved vectorically that 
cos a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sin a into sin b. Now let's go to question number six. Question number six, this is also application of scalar product of two vectors. Question number six, prove vectorically that a square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc into cos a, b square is equal to c square plus a square minus 2ac into cos b, and c square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab cos c, which is also known as cosine law of triangle. This is the properties of triangle, which is known as cosine law of triangle. The first question of triangle is a square is equal to in any triangle a b c in any triangle a b c a square is equal to b square plus a square minus 2 b c into cosine angle between them similarly b square is equal to c square plus a square minus 2 a c into cos b that means cosine angle between a and c and vectors and c square is equal to c square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab into cos c. So let's prove the formula of cosine law of triangle by the vector method. In this solution, we are going to prove the first cosine law of triangle. We are going to prove that a square is equal to b square plus c square minus. We are going to prove the first cosine law of triangle. a square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc into cos c. So let's take a triangle ABC and produce the three sides of the triangle producing BC, AC and AB so that we can find the angle between the two vectors along the three sides of triangle. Let vector A, vector B and vector C. Let vector A which is opposite of angle A, vector B which is opposite of angle B, vector C which is opposite of angle C. Let vector A, vector B, vector C be the vectors along the sides of a triangle ABC taken in order. Now by the vector addition of triangle, now by the method of vector addition of triangle, we can write AB plus BC plus CA is equal to zero. We know that the sum of three vectors along the sides of a triangle taken in order is always equal to zero. So we can write AB vector plus BC vector plus CA is equal to zero. Vector A, B, B, C, C, A, we have supposed as A, B, and C, vector A plus vector B plus vector C is equal to 0. Now solving this equation for vector A, solving this condition for vector A, we get vector A is equal to minus B, vector minus C, shifting vector B and vector C to the right hand side. So we have to solve for A. So let's square on both sides. We have to show that A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC into cos A. So let's do a squaring on both sides because we'll find the value of a square. A squaring on both sides, we get a square is equal to minus vector b minus c whole square. By squaring on both sides, we get vector a square is equal to minus b minus c vector minus b minus vector c whole square. Squaring on both sides. Vector a square as it is. Now minus minus if we take common, then both will be positive. And a square of minus will be again positive. So by using the formula b plus c will be square because after taking minus sign common both the terms will be positive. So a plus b will be square using the formula of a square b plus c will be square is equal to b square plus 2bc plus c square. A square of vector is equal to a square of magnitude. A square of vector is a square of its magnitude. So b plus c vector b plus vector c will be square we can write b square plus 2 vector b dot vector c plus c square or a square is equal to b square plus c square as it is 2 as it is now b dot c by using the formula of a scalar product of two vectors. Vector b dot vector c we can write equals to magnitude of vector b into magnitude of vector c into cosine angle between b and c. The cosine angle, the cosine angle between vector b and vector c, the cosine angle between vector b and vector c is pi minus a because the angle between any two vectors is measured in anti-clockwise direction. So angle made by vector b with angle vector c in the anti-clockwise direction is pi minus a. So according to the formula of a scalar product of two vectors, vector b dot vector c is equal to magnitude of vector b into magnitude of vector c into cosine angle between the two vectors, vector b and vector c. So angle between vector b and vector c is equal to pi minus a. So we can write cos pi minus a by using the formula of a scalar product of two vectors. 
vector b dot vector c is equal to magnitude of b into magnitude of c into cosine angle between b vector and c vector. That means cos pi minus a. Now a square as it is, b square plus c square. Now cos minus theta. Cos minus theta, cos 180 minus theta is equal to minus cos theta. We know by the CAST cast rule of tin metry, cos 180 minus theta. That means second quadrant. In second quadrant, the value of sine is positive and the cos is negative. The value of other trigonometric ratios are negative. So cos 180 minus theta we can write as minus cos theta. Now plus minus minus. Therefore a square is equal to b square plus c square plus minus minus 2bc cos a cos a. Which is the proof of which is the proof of the first cosine law of triangle. A square is equal to a square is equal to b square plus a square minus 2bc into cos a. Similarly, by following the same process, we can prove that b square is equal to b square is equal to c square plus b square is equal to c square plus a square minus 2ac into cos b and c square is equal to and c square and c square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab into cos c. By solving a plus b plus c is equal to 0, by solving a plus b plus, by solving a plus b plus c is equal to 0 for b, we get the proof of second cosine law of triangle and solving the condition a plus b plus c is equal to 0 for c, we get the proof of the third cosine law of triangle. By proceeding the same steps, by proceeding exactly the same steps, we get the proof of, we get the proof of the second and third cosine law of triangle. That means b square equals to c square plus a square minus 2ac into cos b. c square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab into cos c. Now let's go to question number 7. Question number 7. Prove vectorically that a is equal to b cos c plus c cos b. b is equal to c cos a plus a cos c. c is equal to a cos b plus b cos a. So by vector method, we have to prove the projection law of triangle. So this is also the properties of triangle. And we can prove the properties of triangle by applying the scalar product of two vectors. So let's go to the solution of question number 7. Solution of question number 7. Let's prove the first projection law of triangle. That means A is equal to A, B, C. The small letters of English alphabet A, B, C represent the three sides of a triangle ABC and capital letters ABC they represent the vertices or we can say the angle of three angles of triangle ABC so let's prove the first property first projection law of triangle A is equal to A is equal to B cos C B cos C plus C cos B in triangle ABC in triangle ABC let vector BC is equal to vector A vector C A is equal to vector B and vector A C is equal vector A B is equal to vector C. Taking vector A, vector B, vector C along the three sides of a triangle in order. Vector A taking along the side B C, vector B taking along the side C A and vector C taking along the side A B. We know that the sum of three vectors. We know that the sum of three vectors, vector A B plus vector BC plus vector CA. Vector AB plus vector BC plus C. The sum of three vectors. Vector AB plus vector BC plus CA. The sum of three vectors along the sides of a triangle taken in order is always equal to zero. Or we can say by the definition of vector addition, vector AB plus vector BC plus vector CA is equal to zero. We have supposed vector AB, BC, CA. Vector AB, vector AB, BC, CA. Vector a, B, we have supposed C, vector B, C, we have supposed A, and vector C, A, vector C, A, we have supposed as B. Vector A plus vector B plus vector C is equal to 0, taking the sum of three vectors along the sides of a triangle, which is always equal to 0. Now solving for A, because we have to prove that A is equal to, we have to prove that A is equal to B cos C plus C cos B. We have to prove that A is equal to B cos C plus C cos B. So solving for A. Solving A plus B plus C, vector A plus vector B plus vector C for A. Together, 
proof of first projection of triangle. We get vector A is equal to minus B, vector minus vector C, shifting vector B and vector C to the right hand side. We get vector A equals to minus B vector minus C vector. Now taking the dot product with vector A on both sides. Vector A dot vector A is equal to minus vector A dot vector B minus vector A dot vector C. Taking dot product with vector A. Vector A into vector A is equal to A square because a square of any vector is equal to a square of its magnitude. Now A dot B, by the definition of a scalar product of two vectors, A dot B is equal to magnitude of A into magnitude of B into angle between vector A and vector B. Angle between vector A and vector B is pi minus C. So A dot B is equal to magnitude of A magnitude of B into cos pi minus C. Similarly, A dot C, by using the definition of a scalar product of two vectors, A dot C is equal to magnitude of A magnitude of C into cosine angle between vector A and vector C. The cosine angle between vector A and vector C is pi minus B. So angle between vector A and vector C, angle between vector A, vector A and vector C is pi minus B. So replacing angle between two vectors A and C by pi minus B. Now cos 180 minus theta is minus cos theta, so minus minus will be plus cos C. Cos 180 minus theta is minus cos theta, so minus minus will be plus. So we get AB cos C plus AC cos B. Now AA we can take common, then B cos C plus C cos B is left. A cancel, then we get A is equal to B cos C plus C cos B, which is the proof of the first projection law of triangle. Similarly, by following the same steps and solving the condition A plus B plus C is equal to 0 for B, and again solving the condition A plus B plus C is equal to 0 for C, we get the proof of second and third. We get the proof of the second and third projection law of triangle. B is equal to C cos A plus A cos C. We get solving for B and C is equal to A cos B plus B cos A. Solving for C by taking the condition A plus vector A plus vector B plus vector C is equal to 0. And solving for vector B, we get the proof of second projection law. Again, taking the condition vector A plus vector B plus vector C is equal to 0 and following the same steps. And by solving for vector C, we get the proof of the third projection law of triangle. That means we'll get C is equal to A cos B plus B cos C. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video.